Okay, this past examination question, which is about uh, Bradley Company. Uh, it says the audit of Bradley Company's financial statement for year ended so and so is nearly complete, and the auditor's report is due to be issued next week. Bradley Corporates, uh, Bradley Corporates, uh, it should be steel processing plants now. It should be operating. It operates steel processing plants at 20 locations and sells its output to manufacturers and engineering companies. You are performing an engagement quality control review on the audit of Bradley Company as it is a significant new client of your firm. So you are performing an engagement quality control review. Now let me guide you with respect to it. If you are performing an engagement quality control review, that means you are somebody who is a partner who is a manager level type of a person. Now, the requirement A was explain the quality, control and other professional issues raised by the comments in the notes, in the notes from the audit assistant discussing any implication for the completion of audit. Now, one of the audit assistants has been working on the audit of Bradley made the following comment when discussing completion of the audit with you. I was assigned to the audit of provisions. Now, there's something that I want you to understand that the audit of provisions is an area requiring judgments and the audit assistant is usually not experienced enough to be able to handle the areas, uh, such areas on his own. So that is one of the quality issue that is actually arising. Next, one of the provisions relates to $10,000 relates to a legal claim made against the company after an employee was injured in an accident at one of the steel processing plants. I read all the correspondence relating to this and tried to speak to Bradley's legal advisors, but was told by finance director that I must not approach them and should only speak to him about the matter. Now. The auditor should not communicate with legal advisors on their own and should rather seek permission from the client in case if they wish to communicate. Additionally, instead of directly communicating a letter requiring key information could have been written to the legal advisors for obtaining their input on the likelihood of claim. The next is, he said that he is confident that only $10,000 needs to be recognized and that legal advisors had confirmed this amount to him in a discussion of the matter. I noted in the audit working paper that I could not perform all of the planned audit procedure because I could not speak to the legal advisors. So the audit was not properly performed and planned as the communication with the legal advisor was not the only communication with the legal advisor was not the only method of confirming provision. 
other audit evidence should also have been gathered now what next is there the legal claim made by the employee should have been inspected next i noted in the audit working papers that i could not perform all of the planned procedures because i could not speak to legal advisor the audit manager told me to conclude that provisions are correctly recognized in financial statement based on evidence obtained and to move on to the next piece of work so again either the audit manager is incompetent or they did not allocate appropriate time to the engagement he said it did not matter that i had not spoken to the legal advisor because the matter is immaterial to the financial statement now the matters the materiality is to be reevaluated on the basis of the the materiality is to be reevaluated on the basis of the as the audit progresses rather than entity relying upon the materiality originally established we have received we received the final version of the financial statement and the chairman's statement to be published with the financials yesterday i have quickly looked at financials but the audit manager said we need to perform a final detailed analytical review on financial as the audit was relatively low risk manager also said that he had discussed the chairman's statement with finance director so no further work on it is needed the audit has been quite time pressured and i know that the client wants audit report to be issued as soon as possible the manager should perform the audit with professional skepticism and should not be classifying the audit as a low risk on the basis of surface evaluation time pressured audit will lead to we lead to error will lead to higher detection risk the managers involvement with the client from other aspects is also required to be evaluated as the manager's involvement with the client from other aspect is also required to be evaluated as as the actions of the auditor of the manager are indicating a potential self interest threat so basically what happens is that 
explain quality control and other professional issues raised by the comments in the notes now do we need to write this way in the exam no you need to write in the short paragraphs but these are the major pointers that are going to be identified in the scenario these are the major pointers that are going to be identified from the scenario do you people get it now or is there anything else that you would want to add up yeah do you want to add up anything or is it is it is it okay to you all also okay the action required yes the actions required again i am writing down in the form of a bullet points training across the organizations ensure that engagement quality is always maintained the role of the manager should be reviewed appropriate planning should be done for the future engagements including staff allocation and supervision the work performed on the existing audit should be reviewed and additional evidence is gathered before the audit is concluded so these are few actions that need to be performed i repeat these are few actions that need to be performed so we are done with part a of the question we are done with part a of the question now let's move a bit forward and let's discuss further schedule of uncorrected misstatements the schedule of uncorrected misstatements included in bradley's audit working paper is shown below including notes to explain each matter included in the schedule the draft financials recognize revenue of 2.5 million and total assets of 35 million the audit engagement partner is holding a meeting with management tomorrow at which he the uncorrected misstatements will be discussed yeah demola here you go just wait a bit let me elaborate it so that you can easily take the picture this is the best position that i can uh, zoom it into okay now so there are multiple things that are available the pnl balance sheet etc now what are the requirement of the questions the requirement of the question is using the schedule of uncorrected misstatements explain the matters which should be discussed with management in relation to uncorrected misstatements and number 2 assuming management does not adjust the misstatements 
justify an appropriate audit opinion and explain the impact on the auditor's report. Okay, so what is it that you need to discuss? You need to explain to them. Majorly, when you would be discussing, you would be discussing whether the matter is material or not. And uh, what is the accounting treatment to be done with respect to this matter? That is what you are going to be talking about. So what is the matter? It says a share-based payment scheme, the PNL has to be debited, the balance sheet has to be credited. Now, what is the entry? It says a share-based payment scheme was established in September 4. Management has not recognized any amount in the financial statements in relation to the scheme. Arguing that due to a decline in Bradley's share price, the share options granted are unlikely to be exercised. Audit conclusion is that an expense related to equity figure should be included in the financial statements. Now, Uh, 300,000 divided by we have the assets, we have the revenue. Twelve percent. What is it going to be? Twelve percent. Now, Now let's just talk about it. You would say that the expense relating to share based payment transaction is 12% of the revenue and is material. Now what is it that you need to explain to the management? You need to tell them that In accordance with the requirements of IFRS 2, the expense relating to share-based payment transactions is to be recognized if the vesting conditions are met. However, if the vesting condition is a market condition that is a certain share price target is required to be met then in such case then in such case if the vesting condition is a market condition that is a certain share price target is required to be met then in such case the expense is to be recognized even if the market conditions are met or not Therefore, in the present situation, an expense of 300,000 is required to be recognized along with a increase in equity reserve. So that is one thing. The second one of them is a restructuring provision.
What is restructuring provision? Let's talk about it. 50,000. So it's 0 0.5 percent of revenue. A provision has been recognized in respect of restructuring involving closure of one of the steel processing plants. Management approved the closure at a board meeting in April 2005, but only announced the closure in May 2005. The audit conclusion is that the provision should not be recognized. Okay. In <clears throat> although the restructuring provision is not a material amount as it is 0.5% of revenue, but it is good practice to perform correct accounting. Since the requirement for recognition of the restructuring provision is that since the requirement for recognition of the restructuring provision is that announcement should have been made to those who are expected to be affected and Entity has not made the announcement till the 30th April. Therefore, criteria for recognition of restructuring provision is not met. So that is what you are going to be talking about with respect to restructuring provision. Lastly, there is this 10,000. The allowance relates to slow moving inventory in respect of particular type of steel alloy for which demand has fallen. Management has already recognized an allowance of 35,000, which is considered insufficient by the auditing. So, Inventory write down. Okay, uh, there is an error. It wasn't 0.5%, it was 2%. So our answer would change a bit. We would say restructuring provision is a material 
amount as it is 2% of revenue Okay, what are we gonna do? We're gonna say the additional adjustment to be made to the inventory is 0.4% of revenue and is considered to be immaterial. However, it is good practice to perform correct accounting and therefore it should be considered. The inventory is required to be written down below the lower of cost or NRV and based on the assessment, the write down recognized is insufficient and additional write down is required to be recognized. Additional write down is required to be recognized. So that is what you will do. And lastly, it says, assuming that the management does not adjust the misstatement, justify an appropriate audit opinion, and explain the impact on the audit report. So what is going to happen is that in case if the management does not make adjustments in relation in relation to these matters in financial statements then a then all the misstatements will be accumulated. The accumulation will lead to a total misstatement of 260,000. None of the misstatements is of significant amount. None of the misstatements is of significant amount. And therefore, the effects are material, but not pervasive of these misstatements. Resultingly, a qualified except for opinion is required to provide it with men in the basis for qualified opinion paragraph about the misstatements about the misstatements
and the effect of rectifications to be provided kindly confirm to me if this is okay to you all because i am now done with this question i am now done with this question Yeah, let me know in case if anyone has got any questions in this. Okay, seems like you all are okay with this.